Hi everyone, welcome back. In the previous video, we talked about the PCI bus enumeration, right? How does the BIOS go and discover the PCI topology, go down the tree and discover the devices and assign bus numbers, right? We also talked about the type 0 and type 1 headers, the config space headers. Type 0 headers are for endpoint devices and type 1 headers are for bridge devices. Right, we saw all that. If you haven't done that already, please go ahead and review that uh, session so that we can continue our discussion on the next topic in here, which is how to do the config transactions. So first off, let's recap one more time. We have 256 buses in a given system. Okay, And for each bus in the system, we're going to have 32 devices. Okay, And for each device, we're going to have eight functions. And for each function, we are either going to have 256 bytes for a legacy PCI or a 4K byte of config space for PCI Express. Okay, this is for config space registers. So how do we access them? For a legacy mechanism, meaning for a PCI mechanism, which even works for PCIe as well. Okay, so there are two writes we have to make, one to an I/O port, CF8. Okay, and this is called an index register. And then another read or a write okay, at CFC. This is called a data register. So we write the register information that we want to read out of. Okay, If you want to, let's say, read from um, bus 3, device 2, function 5, register 40, I write this information into this register and then I read out of this register. Okay, This is a write to CF8 and then you read out of CFC or if I want to write to this location I'll do the exact same thing. I'll write this information to CF8 and then I write the data to CFC. So what is the format of this write? Since this mechanism can be used for both PCIe and PCI, we have to restrict the registers to only 256, the lowest common denominator between these two, which means I need 8 bits for registers. So 7 colon 0 will be your register. R, R. Okay, and each character here representing 4 bits. Now the next one, the next byte, right, bits 8 to 15. Remember we're going to have 32 devices and 8 functions, which means I need a 5-bit field for the device and a 3-bit field for the function, which is put together 1 byte. Okay. Then I need one more byte for the bus number. We can have up to 256 buses, so I need an 8-bit field for it. So my next byte is going to be 16 to 23, my bus number. And then I am going to have the rest of the bits to be 0 and then I am going to have bit 31 here set to 1. The rest will be zeros. So now let's take an example. Let's see if you want to read what I am showing in here. Okay. So we know that the register number is 40x and device function is device 2 function 5. 1 0 is 2 but device is a 5 bit field so I need to put 5 bits in here and then function number is 3 bits and it's 5 which is 101. So now I'm going to get 1 5 in here. Bus number is 3. Okay, The rest of the bits is going to be 0. right? And the upper bit is 31 is 1 which is 8. All right, so now if I write this value to port CF8, then 
basically it primes it in such a way that the next transaction to CFC will target this. Okay, so now if you want to do a read of this register, I'm going to read from read from CFC. So you know if I do like move dx comma zero CFC hex in EAX comma dx, then EAX will have the value right of what I wanted to read. Here's a small nuance to this. If I want to do a byte access to let's say register 41 instead of 40, then I don't write 41 here, I still write a 40. This has to be D word aligned. But then I read from CFD, the next byte I want to read. Okay. Anyway, so again, this was only for PCI or for the first 256 bytes of PCI Express. If you want to go beyond 256 bytes for the config space in PCI Express, there's a new mechanism called memory mapped config. So if you remember from the very first video, right, how the memory map of the system looks like, we talked about the memory mapped I.O. low and high. And we also talked about in subsequent videos how the system agent determines if a given address is for MMIO range or for DRAM, main memory. This is where the main memory ends, right? And then from here to here, we have a MMIO hole. We are going to carve out, we are going to carve out a small space for MM config out of this MMIO, okay? So typically what happens is, let's say uh, the top of low memory, the memory below four gig where it ends and then the MMIO hole starts. Uh, the BIOS is going to program what is called MM config base. The BIOS programs MM config base into the processor. And from that base to the next 256 megabytes will be treated as MM config space. So any access to this region in here, okay, will be treated as a config transaction. So let's see how this 256 megabytes of space is used to target a particular config space in the system. Okay, so let's say I'm expanding this 256 megabytes of config space here. Okay, so this is from MM config base. So how does this get distributed? across all the config space the system, right? Remember, we're gonna have 4K registers per config space times eight functions per device times 32 devices times 256 buses. Guess what? The size is 256 megabytes. Okay, so this one is one megabyte. Okay, and this one is 32 kilobytes. There are two six buses and each bus requires one megabyte. So I'm going to take this and say the lowest megabyte goes to bus zero. The next megabyte goes to bus one. So on and so forth until you reach the top bus which is bus 255. Okay. Now if you're going to access one megabyte from here to here then it is going to target all the devices in bus zero. Okay, so now if I expand this one a little bit more, I'm going to have this as this one megabyte in size. I'm going to have 32 devices per bus. So I'm going to divide this into 32. One megabyte by 32 is 32. So I'm going to have 32 kilobytes per device. So if I'm going to access the lowest 32 kilobytes, I'm accessing device zero and device one, so on and so forth until I reach the device. 31. If we're going to expand this further, I'm going to have out of this 32 kilobytes, I'm going to carve out 8 spaces for 8 functions. 4k spaces for each because I'm dividing 32 by 8. So this is going to be for then function 0. 
so on and so forth until you get to function 7. And then within 4k, this is my register space, okay, 4k registers. So going back to our example of um, bus 3, device 2, function 5, register 40. How do we access this, right? So now I'm going to have 12 bits for the register because I can go up to 4k, right? So I'm going to have 12 bits here. Then device function we saw, it's going to be a 5-bit field for device and a 3-bit field for function. So I'm getting 1,5 here. And then bus, bus 3. Okay, now this I have to add to the base. I am a config base to create the address space. So now, typically the BIOS is going to program it to let's say, it depends on the BIOS, but typically let's say somewhere between 1 and 2 gig, let's say it is 2 gig. You're going back to the diagram here, you're starting this at, at 2 gig. So 2 gig to 2 gig plus 256 megabytes is some config space. 2 gig is 0x8. Add this here, which is going to be 8. Instead of using the in and out for CF8, CFC, here we are going to use move instructions. So we can construct this D word, use this as a pointer, and just the pointer redirection is going to give you that register you are targeting. Right? Straightforward. But how do you know what value the BIOS has programmed? It could be 8, it could be you don't know maybe maybe it starts at one gig maybe it's four okay how do you know we talk about this in more detail when you talk about acpi but there is a table called mcfg table in acpi using which the os finds the base address that's it so in the next video we'll go a little bit more deeper into pcie okay so thanks for watching and see you in the next video